Thanks for watching. And a uh, special welcome to the Night Owls. Those of you, some of whom, and I wish I'd given you a heads up about this last night, but last night, starting around 2 a.m. here in L.A., something magic happened in the sky. We had a super moon and a blood moon which teamed up to form what they call a super flower blood moon. Flower part means you're a high when you saw it, but <laughs> super flower blood moon happens when there's a super moon and a lunar eclipse at the same time. This is what it looked like over Australia. See, now this is the kind of thing we used to be interested in before we had Instagram. It was, um, <laughs> it was visible here. Unfortunately, I had already had made plans to stare at a different part of the sky at that time. But did you see it, Guillermo? No, I did not see you it. You didn't see it? No. Am I nuts, or did we not have supermoons when we were kids? No, we didn't. Right. We had moon pies, but no supermoons. <laughs> Seems like we have a once-in-a-lifetime astronomical event like every six weeks now. Oh, speaking of once-in-a-lifetime events, the walls are closing in on Donald Jessica Trump. Last week, you know, we learned officially that the Trump Organization was under criminal investigation in New York. And now we know that the Manhattan District Attorney has convened a grand jury to decide whether or not to indict Trump, which can you imagine Donald Trump on trial, putting that little orange hand on a Bible, suddenly the Bible bursts into flames, he escapes in the chaos like a Batman villain. The grand jury has already been selected. They are already meeting. They'll meet three days a week for a minimum of six months. And then who knows, maybe it'll happen. Maybe he'll go to prison. I, you know, I don't know how I would process that. Although I have to say, it really wouldn't be much of a change from the life he's living now. He's trapped in that Mar-a-Lago, eating crappy food, making small talk. The only difference is in jail, he'll play less golf and have more sex. Otherwise, it's really the same. <laughs> and doing interviews with Maria Bartiromo from behind a glass partition. You know, since he got kicked off social media, people are talking a lot less about Trump online. Internet chatter about the former president has hit a five-year low. Last week, his website, where he releases all his statements, had fewer visitors than PetFinder.com and fewer visitors than the recipe website Delish. He's like... <laughs> he's like the Instapot of presidents. He has... Still has some diehards, but most people put them in the back of, of the pantry and moved on with their lives. But <laughs> Team Trump is feeling the heat and uh, has resorted to desperate measures to try to boost their profile. A journalist named Kurt Eichenwald posted a text he got from the Trump campaign that said, this is ridiculous, Kurt. Will you join Trump's new site? We've texted you 13 times. Failed to respond equals Trump knows you've abandoned him. He knows you've abandoned him. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're <laughs> abandoning him with, after 13 text messages. A bunch of people posted, are getting similar messages, uh, like, this is ridiculous, Beverly. Will you join Trump's new site? We've texted you 13 times. Failed to respond equals Trump knows you've abandoned him. A woman named Barbara. 20 days in a row they've contacted this woman telling her, fail to respond within one hour and Trump will assume you've sided with the Dems. Even his robo-texts are insecure. Meanwhile, <laughs> while Donald is slipping off the radar, Melania has dis completely disappeared appeared from the face of the earth. I'm almost at the point where I'm wondering whether she existed in the first place. <laughs> Maybe it was a, she was a series of extras from Slovenian central casting or something. <laughs> Donald is keeping himself busy and relevant with appearances on low-rent cable news channels like Newsmax. He uh, did uh, an interview with Newsmax last night where he had a lot to say about a certain subject. You go out to Palm Springs, take a look at those wind farms out there. They look like junkyards, right. windmills. You look at some of these beautiful farms, windmills, after 10 years, they have to be replaced. When they make these windmills, which are all made in China, they start to rust and rot. But we have windmills all over the place. They have windmills all over the place. We're putting windmills all over the place. They ruin the environment. They kill the birds. I'm not a big fan of wind. It's very, very expensive. Oh, that's, yeah, that's why it doesn't... Use some Gorilla Glue, that stuff looks straight. <laughs> Donald Quixote worried about windmills. I'm really surprised he hasn't weighed in on UFOs yet. You know, ever since Pentagon and military officials went public with their thoughts on UFOs, or UAPs as they now call them, ever since that big 60 Minutes story a week or two back, many people, including members of Congress, have been taking this very seriously, more so than ever before. But the QAnon crowd, of all people, 
is not buying it. The QAnuts have a theory, which is that all this talk of UFOs is a deep state conspiracy to distract us from voter fraud and the truth about the scamdemic. So, <laughs> too crazy to believe in UFOs is a new level of crazy, by the way. And they're not just skeptical, that's the thing. They're convinced, they're absolutely sure this is a distraction, which I, I t I'm not even sure that Jeff Goldblum is a real person and he lives on my block, okay? <laughs> that's how you know someone is irrational. Rational people hedge a little. They're not completely, they say things like, it's possible, we don't have all the information yet, but here's what I think. They don't say I'm 100% confident Oprah is a witch. It's the only way her powers can be explained. They, you don't do that. All these conspiracies about vaccines, election fraud, climate denial, uh, pedophile rings, the reason people believe them is because reality is boring. It's more interesting to be part of a group that cracks a big conspiracy like this. You have a community, you've got a sense of purpose, you've got an enemy to rally against. It's literally a no-brainer for let these people. let me speak. I have something to say. Oh. Well, okay, um, we're kind of, are you, are you? Uh, Ken, Ken. I was gonna say Bigfoot. Well, I am a Bigfoot, but my name is Ken. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, Ken, nice to meet you, but we're, I'm kind of in the middle of the month. Let me speak! Jeez, okay, all right. Thank you. All right. Hi, QAnon. It's me, Ken. Bigfoot, whatever. They're not really that big. <laughs> for many years, you people have been searching for me, and I felt like it was finally time to reveal myself because, well, honestly, I miss you. <laughs> Remember when we used to, you used to stay up all night burning the midnight meth, scouring logging maps trying to find me? We're listening to homemade scanners, desperately hoping to pick up signs of unexplained life, Bigfoot or Sasquatch or UFOs or chupacabras. <laughs> anyway, remember how you used to go around telling people you had your butts probed by aliens as if that was something to be proud of? Well, now we have credible evidence of unexplained objects flying around the sky and suddenly you're not interested anymore? What happened to you? What happened to us? Where are my crazy people at? You used to believe everything you overheard at a fireworks stand. Now you're about Pfizer? The same people who make your boner pills? You, you think they're tracking you? So what if they aren't tracking you? Welcome to my world. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Ken, I know we all appreciate it. Well, Look, okay, all right, all right. I'm not trying to say that I should be the center of your world, I just, well, I'm just a hideous 11 foot tall forest monster with poop caked in his fur, <laughs> standing in front of a group of radicalized weirdos, asking you to stalk me. <laughs> All right, well, that was weirdly touching. Um, thank you. Th thank you, thank you for your my time. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's... I'll kill you in the woods! Oh, okay. All right, that was... Ken, it's that way. Ken, yeah, right back through there. Thank you, all right. That was Ken, the Bigfoot. <laughs> Guillermo, a Bigfoot bursts in, you do nothing, you just sit there? His one hour right at Jesse. <laughs> Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, you're a, you're a real Ace Ventura pet detective, aren't you? <laughs> oh my God, you're hammered, aren't you, right now? Are no. you very drunk right now? No, only have one. A little, all right. <laughs> well, um, Emily Blunt is here tonight, provided Ken doesn't get her. It's and. Um, Diego Benetta is here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Emily Blunt is the star of A Quiet Place Part Two, the very long-awaited sequel to A Quiet Place. This sequel was supposed to come out last year, but they hit the pause button because of the pandemic, which meant we had to shelve our review of the film by our in-house movie critic, Yaya, who moved to Egypt a few weeks ago, and but not before we got his thoughts. And here is Yaya, the loudest of them all, talking about A Quiet Place Part Two. <laughs> 
is me, Aya. I talk about the new movie. The new movie behind me is called Quiet Please. Shh. In that uh, bar too. Like everybody need Quiet Please. And you have animal like dinosaur. Everybody like hang the car. E, e, e. Oh boy, you see the car? Gone. The lady in the movie, her name uh, Balissa Point. Like B U N T. She's also in with Tom Cruise, the movie, the people die and come alive, die and come alive. She's in the movie, she take care about the kids. It's called Mary Poppins. You know Poppins, like a Greek name. He's a director for that movie, her husband. His name, what is his name? His name, uh, Chris. Oh, her name, her husband's name, Jeff. David, Michael, Mark, Steve, uh, Tommy, uh, Brad, her husband, his name John Caruxo. He's in also, he's in the big show on Amazon, it's called Jack Black, you know? It's good movie, it's scary movie, maybe make a in your pants. I see you next time, maybe not. Who care? Thanks for watching, and remember, every time you click the subscribe button, one of your enemies gets destroyed.